Hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're actually going to be doing a bit of machining which is a, quite a novelty so not much but we're going to do some top hat bushes for the shape of ice and some keys for the underside of the shape of ice to locate in the T slots on the shaper table so a couple of very simple jobs albeit one of them is going to be probably more challenging in the fact that um, it's got imperial hardware that I don't have any of in the vise so I'm probably going to need to drill the vise out and put some metric threads in or make some imperial screws or some sort, I don't know yet, we'll, we'll sort that out when we get there. So as I said we're going we're gonna to make some bushes and keys, we're then going to check out the shaper itself. So now I've got it wired up and you've seen that in my last video hopefully we're getting very close to starting to think about making some cuts on this thing so what I want to do and I've never done this since I've done all the reassembly is put some DTIs around the around the machine check the flatness of the table squareness of the table all that kind of thing put the vise on clock it up with the new hardware that I'm about to make and do some clocking of the vise to see how that fits on the table and what that looks like so that's largely going to be the content of this episode so without any more waffling on I am going to knock a quick drawing up of what I need and then I'll bring it back to show you that quickly in case anybody doesn't know what top hat bushes are and then we will crack on with the manufacture and the checking of the shaper. Okay we've got our vice tipped up I'm just making some rough sketches of both the top hats and the keys so I'm just taking my dimensions for both so in case anybody doesn't know, um, most people will, but the keys, I want to put two keys between this slot, what's a one here where that hole is, one here where that hole is, and into the into the T slot on the bed for location. And I've been really lucky here. This is obviously not original manufacture, because everything on this vice is imperial. What I've found is just using some gauge blocks or slips I've used that to gauge the width of this slot so I've got a, a nice feel on the slips in that slot and that's 14 millimeters dead so that's metric and then I've done the same thing another set of gauge blocks and I've used that for gauging the T-slot both ends of the T-slot so I've got a good fit tiny bit of clearance on that I don't want it too tight that I've got to hammer this thing on each time so I've got the dimension of that and then what I was concerned with was these two holes here so when I put the keys in I need to screw them into these holes and I thought these would be something like quarter UNF or quarter BSF or something like that you know imperial they're not they're metric they're M6 so that makes life a lot easier for me because I've got metric hardware in the workshop the only problem I've got is that the head of an M6 bolt or an M6 cap head rather is about the same size as this T slot so there's going to be next to no wall thickness left at all where the hole is which there's things we can do around that I might just pop a couple of cap heads up in the lathe and just turn the turn the head down just to get myself a little bit of clearance meaning I don't have to counter bore so deep or I could just counter sink the bottom and just use a countersunk screw rather than a cap head screw and if it slightly if it slightly protrudes each side we can just tidy that up you know we can just take a bit of that material off as well so I've got options around that so the last dimension I need to take on my top hats so I'll just turn the vise over for anybody who's not encountered top hat bushes before something that used to get used an awful lot <coughs> on machine vices and you really don't see it these days so it's a bush this shape that's gonna this diameter here is gonna drop through the hole in the vise the clamping hole the center hole is just clear on your stud or thread and then you've got a nice big flat surface at the top that's gonna sit on this big flat surface here to get a good you know it just gives you a really good location and you get maximum clamping force for a minimal size thread because I've only got M8 hardware going in here so that's why I'm doing this so I've got all my other dimensions already measured up the last one I want to do 
is have a look at how big we want the top of that top hat to be. So I was, you know, I could be using a six inch rule for this if I'm honest, but I'm just going to use a vernier. We're going to measure that flat. That's about 30 mil there or thereabouts. If I went 30 mil the other way, it would be hanging over the front, which I don't want. So if I bring this in and use that as my gauge, that's 13 mil. So if I went 26 mil, and I should be coming roughly flush with the front of the vice here, so we'll, we'll go for 26 millimeter diameter on the top of the top hat. So that's all of that done. I'll get some material found for these things and um, join you at the machines as we start making them. There we go, that's got our first one of the two done. I'll do the other one off camera, exactly the same. You'll have seen me come in with the boring bar and put an undercut, a very small undercut into this corner, just so that there's no fouling on the insert radius. All I've got to do left to this now is put it back in the three jaw chuck, very lightly, and I've left a quarter of a mil skim on this back face to get down to my finished size. I'll not film that, it's just facing straight off and a chamfer in the bore and also on the OD to match this chamfer. So I'll do the other one the same and then I'll bring you back when we're making the keys for the underside. Okay, we've got our two top hat bushes done. Just put them back in the lathe the other way around, faced and countersunk and there, apart from a chemical black, they're complete. So we'll move those out of the way. And I have checked them in the vise and they fit well. So on to the next piece now, which is the keys, just for a reminder, for the underside of the vise. So they look a little bit like T-slots with a hole through with a counterbore in the back. So that's what we're going to make next. I have found some stock which is just hot rolled 
mild steel for what we're doing here that will be perfectly good enough for these keys I'm going to be installing and uninstalling this vice on a regular basis and I'm, I'll treat them with respect ideally we could do with something a little bit harder than that but for what we're doing they'll be fine so I'm going to put some parallels in and I've just thought this set up through a little bit as much as I can to try and make this as easy as possible so I need to finish up at 14 millimeters wide overall and the overall depth top to bottom is 8 millimeters now this stock is about 9 millimeters thick with the mill scale on so what we're going to do is sit it I need to get this the right way round because one end which on this end here is really rolled over where it's been sheared or yeah it's probably where it's been sheared or something so we're going to go in this end and we're just going to hang it out of the vise like that let's get my knocker down on the parallels that's tight so what we're going to do is just take the mill scale off this top surface which I know you can't see that wasn't very helpful there we go so we're going to take the mill scale off the top surface here flip it around take the mill scale off the bottom surface to finish it to our 8 millimeters overall height and then we're going to cut across this end to clean the end face up and then we're going to mill our T-slot feature in both sides through the through the stock to get the T-slot feature milled in and then we'll just travel all the way down with a small end mill and just basically part, the, part them off and then I'll have two in, I'll drill them first before we do that obviously while we're still in the vise and then what we'll do at that point is just put a bandsaw through the middle and tidy the edges up, the band torn edges on the belt sander so that's the plan of attack so we'll crack on with that now and I'll bring you back when we're just cleaning this face up Okay, we're on to the next stage. I've just had to move this out of the vise slightly. I miscalculated how much room I was going to need. So I'm trying to do a bit of a lesson here in planning, job planning, utilising as few tools as possible, getting as minimal material wastage as possible, all those kind of things that I've discussed in previous tips videos. So what we're going to do is, I've got a 6mm slot drill here. We're going to just, even though I've machined this end with the carbide end mill, we're just going to take a very light skim over here. I'm going to set my DRO at that point, so I know where this edge is then. We're going to use this to plunge my two screw holes in, because I'm using M6. So I just plunge straight through with the slot drill. That should get me a good enough clearance hole. I'm going to mill my step, my T slot sort of shape, in this first edge. And it will be, because I've touched on and milled this edge, I know it's going to be exact to the drop and then we're going to pitch across to this side and mill the slot, the T-slot shape in the opposite side over here and what you know, this is a good tip for anybody using ER collets like these if there's any run out at all if you're expecting a a tolerance fit, which is what I need here 
if you just go right I've machined that edge so if I take 6mm off for my cutter and then move over the distance I need to go to mill my slot on the opposite side the chances are more often than not you will go undersized because if there's any run out at all in this slot drill which there will be in an ER collet it will cause you to go undersized across that width so I'm going to go further than I need to machine in measure my overall width of the T shape and then we'll pitch in and just take a final cut across the part to get my width right and then at that point we'll pitch across even further and we're just going to part this part this whole piece off using the same slot drill so effectively that's getting all my milling done my holes done my disconnecting the parts from the rest of the stock done all with the one tool so nice and easy and all in the one setup Okay, we've got our first step feature complete. We're now going to move on. I've touched on on the back of the part with the cutter set my Y axis DRO. So I've now got X and Y knowledge of where this part is in my DRO. And I've moved over to my first hole center. So we're going to plunge through with the slot drill all the way through the part to put the first screw hole in. So we just had to swap hands and use the slip jaws just to stop that curling round as you break out trapping the slot drill and breaking the cutter. So that's our part complete. Finished dimensions everywhere. Just got to deburr it, get rid of this bit of a rag on the corner where we've just parted through and next job is to split that with a bandsaw through the middle which I'll not film and then I'm just going to do a final measure up countersink the two holes that I need to countersink I'll do that before I split it so I'll bring you back when I've done all those bits that's not you know there's nothing fancy about that but we've got all of our surfaces fully machined the only surface that won't be machined are the two inside surfaces here where I split the two parts away from each other and here's tip of the day when you put your stock back in your off cut bin especially when it's come off the milling machine go around it with a file before you chuck it back in your off cut bin saves you buying lots of plasters okay just clear a couple of things up so I've deburred I've countersunk my two holes D-bird on the back of the holes and I was getting ready for slicing this in half and I thought I'll just check this so I've been over it with 
a micrometer and I'll show you the readings in a minute. So if I wasn't filming this episode, would I have attacked this part in the way I've just shown the manufacturer? No, I wouldn't. I'd have gone down probably a different route completely. I'd have been using different tools, switching tools out in the spindle, all that kind of thing. I'd have probably gone for drilled holes rather than a slot drill through it or you know that I would have gone down a different route without a shadow of a doubt the reason I went down that route was just to show a different way of doing things if you're restricted you've only got one tool holder you don't want to keep swapping tools out all so I was just showing a different way of thinking about manufacturing something like that without you know with the minimum amount of setups the minimum amount of material wastage was it the most efficient way of doing it? No. Could I have done it quicker by just battering in with a different load of tools? Yes, absolutely. I could have used carbide end mills rather than high speed. I, you know, there's a, oh, hundreds of different ways to attack the same part. So just clear that up. But I just wanted to demonstrate this, the accuracy that you can get by choosing a method like this. So if I measure up now, and apologies because I'm working around the camera here, so I'll just get my my micrometer in here and I'm just going to take a, a measurement across the top part of the T and I thought I'll just check this back to drawing before I cut it in half and just see how we've done so this should be let's get it where I can see what I'm doing this should be 9.4 across here And we're measuring 9.44, probably 7.04 up on that dimension. The big dimension across the back here should be 14 millimeters. We just chuck the mic across there, and we're 13.9. Eight. Thirteen point nine seven, something like that. So, yeah, reasonably accurate within twenty twenty five microns or a thou, all over. And I thought I'd do okay. I'm happy with the, what I've got. I'm just going to lay this in the table first. So I turned it this way up got a really nice press fit into the table slots so that's great that way around and then I thought we'd try on the vise tip the vise upside down to try it on the thicker section in the slot on the vise and I'm pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling and not a chance of that going in so I came that's why I got the mic out measured 14 yeah well I've hit that within 20 microns so what's the deal so I tipped the vise back up again, got the measurement gear out and the slot in the bottom of the vise is 13 millimetres, not 14. So, <laughs> <laughs> measured twice, caught once. So after doing a great job of demonstrating how to make something to print, I probably need to focus a little bit more attention on how to measure something up in the first place. So, not a drama, what I'm going to do, and I'm not filming it, I'm just going to drop this back in the vise and I'm just going to dust half a millimeter off each of these edges with the end mill I've already got in the machine that you've seen me using I'm just going to run half a millimeter off both of those edges to get that down to 13 and jobs are good un. despite the fact it wasn't a good one first time round but as I've always said I'll always show my mistakes I'll bring you back in a bit when we're moving on to the next stage so, slight change of plan, I'm going to need to use my short T-nuts, not my long T-nuts, because now I've put the keys in the bottom of the vise, I've created a foul condition that I would not previously given thought to. So we'll put our short T-nuts in the T-slots, we'll bring our vise over, and hopefully now Yep, that's going to work. So we've dropped our vice onto the table, locating in the in the slots. We've now got our T 
top hat bushes one in each side then a washer on each and some cut to length socket cap head screws that have been deliberately cut to a length that I know even though I've rounded the the bottom threads off in the bottom of the T T nuts I know that there's no way these screws can bottom out in the bottom of the slot with this stack up of hardware right, it looks like Houston we've got another problem this is going extremely well okay I don't know if anybody can spot the problem but if you can't I'll point it out whilst the key slot has been put in with respect to the fixed jaw on the other side and we've just proved that with the clocking the two original holes that were put in on this vise when it was first manufactured are offset counterclockwise by an amount the centre line of those two holes is offset to that key slot meaning when I put my nice tight fitting units that I've made into the holes I can't find the T-nuts so I'm thinking about what we do now we can either put the vice on no oh no taking the keys out won't make any difference because I still need to clock the vice up anyway so I've still got the foul condition with the holes so it's the holes that's the problem so I can either go without the top hat bushes and just put some washes on the top which I don't really want to do or I can try and elongate these holes which means I've then got oval holes which means the top hat bushes would still function as a washer potentially but they wouldn't function as a bush so that's not really well it would get it would solve the problem but I wouldn't be getting the use of the top hat bush or I could try and open the holes out bigger but in the right location and then I lose my bearing surface on the other side so yes okay so we're going to go for the least of all of those evils so I've clamped two one two three blocks in my mill vise I've then put the shape of ice on top of the mill vise and tightened up onto those one two three blocks which means that's nice and sturdy and I'm sat on top of my two vice jaws are sat pretty much on top of each other so I know that you know flatness wise we're going to be well close enough for what I'm about to do I've got a piece of 12 millimeter drill rod in the collet chuck and basically I've come over and picked up using the drill rod my first hole and I'm now going to put a 12 millimeter end mill in and we're just basically going to elongate this hole slightly in the clockwise direction to counteract this out of alignment and then we'll swap the end mill back over for the drill rod wind across pick this hole up do the same thing again in the clockwise direction and we're just going to elongate these holes and that means I can still use all the hardware that I've just made and I think that's probably the least of all the evils for now and if at some point I decide to bore these holes out bigger anyway to a bigger size and make a bigger bush it, I can still do that I've not lost anything by doing what I'm doing because I'd need to come I'd need to bias the boring in the clockwise direction anyway so I don't lose anything by taking this option right now so I'll get the end mill loaded up and we'll get this first one done.
Okay, so we've elongated both our slots now. I've got my rear clamping screw in with the top hat. Here's the front one. So that's all going in lovely now. I've not got quite the fit I wanted with the top hats, but they're still working as intended, spreading the load out across a wider area. So that's resolved that little problem. So you've seen me clock the vice. I know I can clock the vice in with these keys located very well. It's it's almost bang on. That's got the vice onto the bed. I'm just going to give those a nip and get a feel for. what that feels like. Yeah that's going to clamp lovely. For the size of this machine and the size of cuts we're going to be taking probably limited to about half a millimetre depth of cut, 20 thou from what I've seen other people with the Atlas 7Bs that's going to be more than man enough to cope with that and I've not really not really gone nuts tightening those up either so happy with that so as always Nothing is ever straightforward, but the fun of this hobby is finding the solutions to the little problems that throw themselves in your way. Okay, there we go guys, that gets us to the end of this episode, which started off in my mind as what was going to be a very, very simple and easy <laughs> little bit of a job to do, but as, as I've just said, there is always some challenge or another that presents itself that you need to overcome. So. I'm happy with the vice, that, that is really solid on there, happy with all the mounting, happy with the keys that I've done underneath that it's going to make clocking the vice up easy and going to make sure that it's repeatable when I load the vice onto the machine. So yeah, another step closer to cutting metal. I think I've got one more episode to do which is going to be the belt guards as I said thrown in with all of the geometric checks what, effectively what I'm going to do is make a map of the machine as it is and I'm going to talk about some of the help and support I've had in my thinking around that in the next video and then we're going to run we're going to cut some we're going to cut some metal which is really what I'm aiming towards and what I want to get doing and I know lots of you want to see this cutting and making some chips or swarf depending where you're from so that's what we're going to do and we're going to bed this machine in before we start doing anything at all to try and you know affect or change any of the sort of run outs that we've got so hopefully that all makes sense if it doesn't it will in the next video hopefully so thank you all very much for watching thank you for subscribing thank you to the new subscribers that have come along and we'll catch you all very soon in another video when we'll be making something else